I would like to remind everyone, please make sure all cell phones are turned to the off or vibrate position. Also, please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on Comcast Channel 99, at and Verse, and the City of Gadsden YouTube channel. This meeting of the Gadsden City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Latham. Present. Councilman Smith. Here. Councilman Avery. Here. Councilman Back. Here. Councilman Wilson. Here. Councilwoman Minatra. Here. And Councilman Robinson. Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Brian Harbison to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you for today. Your goodness to us is overflowing. We just thank you for the past few days where we could gather with family and friends and and, and be thankful to you for all that you provided for us. And now as we move into uh, the Christmas holiday season, God, I just pray that your blessings will continue to flow. We thank you for our mayor, for this council. And God, we are thank you for the hope that now uh, is a reality outside these walls with the public. And we thank you for our citizens, what they mean to us. Pray that God, everything we do will be because of them and the sacrifice they've made to be here. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Pray that uh, you'll continue to, to help us as we walk daily to keep our focus on you. And we promise to give you the praise at the end of the day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and city council meeting held on November 22nd. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of November 18th through the 24th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Number seven on the agenda is proclamations. I don't believe we have any today, do we? No? Okay. All right, number eight, unfinished business. We have none today. So moving right along to number nine, this is the time and place is advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of an ordinance rezoning property located at 1120 and 1130 Goodyear Avenue from R2 Multiple Family Residence District to 01 Office District. The owners have been approached by a potential buyer who wants to construct a medical office at this location. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this ordinance? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? This ordinance was presented today for the first reading and the council will vote on it next week. All right, number 10. On the agenda, our next public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property located at 207 Second Street North in District 2, Walid Opposy, subject to a mortgage in favor of Walid Opposy, being the last known owner. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor? Mr. President, I'm Brian Harbison with the Building Department. This case involves commercial property in East Gadsden. We filed the case in July of last year. There have been no improvements. There was a permit taken out in November. No work has been done on that. We're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. Thank you. forward. Thank you.
All right, what is the pleasure of the council? Make a motion to debate. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 11, our next public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property located at 1400 Walnut Street in District 5. Jackie Jordan, subject to a mortgage in favor of Willie K. Griffin and Alice Ruth McCoy Griffin, subject to a mortgage of City of Gadsden being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, this case involves a burned structure. We filed it in October of last year. There have been no improvements. There are no permits to improve, and we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. Thank you. All right, what is the pleasure of the council? Move to abate. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 12, our final public hearing is a resolution assessing nuisance abatement lien on property at 2000 Rainbow Drive in District 4. Robert Chapman, mortgage in favor of Joe Ronald Johnson and wife Betty A. Johnson, and Joe Ronald Johnson and wife Betty A. Johnson, in care of Jim Enzer being the last known owners. This is for demolition work that has already been performed, and the amount is $4,191.40. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? All right, what is the pleasure of this council? Being that it's in my district, I drive by it every day. Uh, I'm in favor of proceeding, moving forward with this. Second. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 13 is a resolution awarding bid number 3487 for body armor concealable ballistic vests. The purchasing department has recommended the bid be awarded to Gulf States Distributors Incorporated. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. A quick question, Council President, and it doesn't really matter, I guess. I know this is grant funding, but did we ever get a final number on how many of those vests we were going to be purchasing? I know it's a, the, the quote is per vest. I just didn't know if we ever got a final number. You know, I'm not sure. I know, I think Captain is looking in a folder. Give him a, a second to do that. It's going to be based on how many people retire, because if they retire and we hire new people, then they'll they'll have to have a vest. Gotcha. Um, it also bases the vest are good for five years, and it just depends on how many. And Paul may know how many are going to be expiring soon. Yeah. So the number can fluctuate because anytime we hire somebody, then we're going to have to purchase a vest for them because they're specifically fitted to them. Their body's actually measured for it. So they, I mean, basically, y'all take the grant funding and it's used as needed to provide vests as as required either for them being out of date or for new hires or and if we're lucky we won't have enough money and we'll have to pay for all of it right in other words if we're lucky and able to hire exactly people, then yeah we'll, we'll hopefully we get thing. to spend all this money on new uh new vests i got it yes sir appreciate it thank you captain cody thank you chief all right uh clerk will you take we, we don't actually have a motion We need yet. a motion. Would anybody like to make a motion to adopt this resolution? So moved. Second. Now, is there any discussion, which we've already had? Uh, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known with saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Thank you. Number 14 is a resolution awarding bid number 3488 for a 2022 or newer two-wheel drive crew cab mid-size pickup truck. 
The fleet maintenance manager and NEAPA coordinator and the purchasing department have recommended that the bid be awarded to Donahue Chevrolet LLC and the amount is $23,036.70. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 15 is the resolution awarding bid number 3489 for new reel grinder and bed knife grinder. The fleet maintenance manager and NEAPA coordinator and the purchasing department have recommended the bid be awarded to Jerry Pate Company. The amounts are $55,993 and $29,403. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Only thing I'll say is I expect my score to drop by at least five strokes once this thing gets going. That's right. This is for <laughs> the uh, Twin Bridges Golf Course. Yeah. All right. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 16 is a resolution authorizing agreement with CDG Engineers and Associates Incorporated. This is for environmental engineering and construction services for the underground storage tank closure at City Hall, and the amount is $31,000. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, Heath, I know we talked about this last week at, I guess, the pre-council, but maybe for the for the transparency, would you give a brief 30,000 overview? Absolutely. So we do have an underground storage tank that is a uh, diesel storage tank for a backup emergency generator at City Hall. Uh, that tank is experiencing some issues. It is also uh, just overall outdated a bit with the uh, the way that we keep up with the volume inflow, outflow, et cetera. There's some uh, deterioration. Um, uh, there's not deterioration on the tank yet, but there's some cathodic protection that keeps it from deteriorating that is starting to fail as well. <laughs> Meaning in the next couple of years, we'll have to make some further investment on this tank. So we have opted to go ahead and remove this tank and install a much smaller uh, above ground storage tank that we can um, access and actually remove and relocate to another facility as we choose to do so. Uh, this contract uh, includes all of the environmental testing, all of the ADM correspondence that's required to go through these steps. Uh, just in one fell swoop. So it should be done early next year, pending the, uh, the ability to, to locate a tank as a lot of supplies are in scarce supply these days. Uh, other than that, I think that pretty much answers it. That was good. good. Thank you so Mr. much. Mr. Yes, could I yes, ask sir. Something? yes could, Mayor. Heath, is there any way that tank could be used for other purposes, like if we chose to serve, uh, use gasoline over at the boat docks? Possibly so once we get down and can view uh, the tank and see the actual status of it. Normally the inside is, is pristine because it's held the diesel fuel. Uh, not knowing the, the exact state until we remove it, uh, sometimes it's still better. Once we see that, we can truly give you an answer. But once we, uh, uh, sometimes also they're, they're purposed, repurposed for other things such as drainage structures if they're still intact enough. As far as a new one today, we, we would take the same um, requirements as far as cathodic protection and such. I'm, I'm chasing a rabbit there. Yes, once we see it, we can review it and give you a proper answer. So if we did the gas at the boat docks for the boaters on the river and we didn't do it below ground, we could have one on ground. Absolutely. So would there, you, there's multiple options. Would you we just, would just consider that and keep yes, that in mind because that's something we want to do. Thank absolutely. You. That's a good idea. Any other comments, questions? All right, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. All right, number 17 is a resolution authorizing agreement with Crappie Masters Incorporated. This is for the city to sponsor a fishing tournament on December 10th, 2022 at Coosa Landing, and the amount is $35 per boat, not to exceed $1,000. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 
Number 18 is a resolution authorizing First Amendment to property lease agreement with Gadsden State Community College. This adds wording regarding the use of the youth softball and baseball fields to the existing lease dated January 17th, 2020, authorized by resolution number R-10-2020. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 19 is a resolution authorizing agreement with Gadsden State Community College. This is to allow use of Titan Baseball Field at 1500 West Megan Boulevard for baseball practices and games. This is for a one-year term from August 1st, 2023 to July 31st, 2024. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 20 is a resolution authorizing acceptance of grant from the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency, ALEA, under the fiscal year 2022 Homeland Security Grant Program. This is for acquisition of a robotic platform that will allow first responders to perform operations in hazardous conditions, as well as perform search and rescue operations remotely. And the amount is $147,187. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. I will say I, uh, I appreciate the grant and the, uh, the opportunity to receive this grant. Uh, it's, it's obvious it does what it says that it'll do, but it, it's going to enhance our, uh, our police department's ability to serve and protect and also to protect themselves while they do uh, some of these operations that they're uh, that they perform for us on a daily basis. So this is a this is a, a real positive for the for the city. Under first reading and number 21, there's an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2023 budget. This is related to agenda item number 20 that we just read and voted on and reflects receipt of the ALEA grant in the amount of $147,187. This ordinance has been presented today for first reading and the council will vote on it next week. Number 22 is new business. Any new business today? Seeing none, number 23, department reports, committees, boards. Yes, Jen, thank you. Good afternoon, or close afternoon, I guess. Um, so we have a busy weekend here in Gadsden, and I just wanted to share some uh, activities that we we're going to have. Uh, first of all, is going to have we're going to host the Christmas tree lighting here at City Hall. Uh, the music by the Tuba Crips Christmas starts at 5:30. Christmas tree lighting at 6 p.m. and the boat parade on the Coosa River at 6:05. We'll have uh, seating for people to come and to enjoy and see our Christmas tree be lit here at City Hall. Uh, another activity is Mistletoe Market. It's happening at the Downtown Civic Center on Broad Street. Friday from noon to five, and Saturday nine to four, and Sunday nine to four. On Saturday, we'll have James Spann book signing at 10 a.m. We'll have Big Sam the Balloon Man there at 11.30, and you can meet the Grinch um, at starting at 12.30. On Sunday, Santa and the Grinch will arrive back by 18, <coughs> 18 train at 1.30, and they will hand out candy and be at the photo booth starting around um, 1.45. The Christmas Parade on Broad Street will be Saturday at 10 a.m. The Edwell Care Center Sprint will lead the parade with bands and floats to follow. Christmas at the Falls is opening. We open on Thanksgiving night. Tickets are on sale now online at knuckleoffallspark.com. It's $8 Monday through Thursday and $10 on Friday through Sunday. Tonight we are closed due to the severe threat of severe weather. So we will be uh, working with people who have purchased tickets tonight to move them to a different night, but we hope everybody will come out this week and until Christmas, we'll 
December 23rd, and then we'll open back up after Christmas. Youth Basketball Jamboree will be held Friday and Saturday at Carver, Walnut Park, Thompson, Mitchell, and the Coliseum. Friday games start at 5.30 and Saturday games start at 9 a.m. It is a dollar at the gate to enter. We'll also be hosting Kings of the Coosa High School Championship at Coosa Landon this Saturday. Thank y'all and we hope y'all enjoy. Thank you. Jen kind of stole one of my points there uh, about the severe weather. That's okay. Uh, we do have a risk of severe weather overnight tonight. Uh, the National Weather Service just put out a new update. Um, and our prime time is going to be from about 8 p.m. tonight through about 6 in the morning. So it's going to be an overnight event. We just want to encourage everybody to, to make sure that they have multiple ways to hear the warnings. Um, if we're put under a tornado watch, the standard procedure is that the tornado shelters in the county will open. Um, and at that time, we'll go ahead and update Shelter Etowah. For those that don't know, uh, shelteretowah.com is a, a website that we update in real time whenever a tornado watch is issued. And as shelters open, people can go to shelteretowah.com and it will show them what shelters are open. Uh, what shelters allow pets, which ones are handicap accessible, um, and it makes it easier for folks to know where they're going to go. The one thing that we would encourage everybody to do is today, while the weather is nice, make your plan. Uh, don't wait till five minutes before the weather gets bad to try to figure out what you're going to do. If you live in a manufactured home, you need to have somewhere sturdy to go. Um, so we want to encourage everybody to do that. Uh, some of the effects that we can anticipate from uh, this event, this is coming directly from uh, the National Weather Service in Birmingham. Uh, tornadoes are possible, damaging winds up to 60 to 70 miles per hour, uh, gusts sometimes higher than that, and quarter-sized hail. Uh, because this will be a protracted event over a period of several hours, uh, we know how flooding usually occurs and we're anticipating that. Uh, I'll be the <coughs> duty officer for this event. I'm the duty officer this week. Uh, so I will be burning the midnight oil uh, to make sure everybody stays safe. So uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Um, other than that, just everybody make sure you have a plan and know what to do. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, so I suppose being that there are tornadoes, that the weather, the temperature is going to be warm. Yes, sir. Um, so that means warming stations won't be open? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, the, for, for this time of year, Councilman, whenever we get dew points up in the upper 50s, low 60s, that's usually enough to, to drive storms uh, to go severe. When we get into the summertime, 70 is the magic number that we look at. So uh, this is going to be really the collision of a system that's coming out of the northwest meeting with uh, moisture from the Gulf Coast. I'm just questioning basically for, because of course with cool weather, we have warming stations open, uh, open for those that of course have nowhere to go to stay warm. Right. And so of course now we have an, a uh, change of weather okay where we're about to have a storm um and so it's the matter of where those same people are going to go uh, right so um just just something uh, i know this has been an uh, uh a continuous conversation through i guess from my knowledge a couple of administrations so i hope that we can um uh, come to uh some type of head in figuring out something to, to aid with these people. And I'm not talking about aid in crippling them right. and, and, and providing them a, 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 a everyday, all day solution, but something definitely for something like this. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Absolutely. And and we, we do open the shelters whenever there's a tornado watch. Uh, as, as lead times have gotten better, uh, you know, when I was growing up as a teenager, you know, you might have about 15 or 16 minutes advance notice. Uh, the National Weather Service now can give advance notice three or four hours uh, ahead of storms. So that gives people plenty of time, and, and we try to make sure that everybody has somewhere safe to go. 
Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other reports? All right. At this time, we have two citizen requests. We uh, recognize Dr. Kathy Murphy, the president of Gadsden State Community College. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, good morning. Thank you so much. It's uh, always a privilege to come and uh, speak to our council. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I'd like to start by just thanking our former Mayor Guyton and the former council, many of you, uh, who allowed me the privilege to be able to be a part of the Economic Development Academy. It was a terrific experience, and not only did you allow me to have a seat at that table, but you allowed Dean Ken Kirkland to have a seat at the table. Uh, our Council President Back, and also former Councilman uh, Deverick Williams, and our friend David Hooks with IDA, we were able to represent our community, and what a privilege it was for me to be able to sit on that. So uh, I'm so appreciative of that opportunity. I do want to take just this opportunity to congratulate you, Mayor. Uh, uh, for your seat. We thank you for raising your hand and, and uh, your selection. And to all of you, to our president, congratulations for that important seat. And to all of you who've been elected in your respective seats, we do want to commend you. We have some gifts for you. And uh, John Robertson is going to share that with you. John is our director of advancement and also alumni relations. He's with our Cardinal Foundation. You're going to find a couple of interesting things in there. First of all, I say interesting, there's an umbrella in there. And uh, the thought was uh, not every day is going to be a fair day as you sit in your seat. There are going to be a few rainy days, and cloudy days, and maybe some stormy days. So there's an umbrella from Gaston State. You'll also find a notebook portfolio. That's so you can keep good tally of all your successes and maybe take notation of your strategies for addressing the challenges that you might have. Um, there's also a thermos in there. I'm suspecting coffee's going to be needed. I thought about a whiskey shot glass. It just didn't seem appropriate, so I, I backed off the whiskey shot glass. We didn't include that for you. But just something simple to say congratulations and to thank you. I've been president at Gaston State now for two years, and I've just been re-reminded of some things as I sit in the seat as the president of a community college, and that is... We don't live in isolation of each other. Uh, that we don't or should not be living in silos. And that it's not about I, me, and mine, but it's absolutely about us, we, our, and community. And as president of Gaston State Community College, I want you to know that I get that side of how critical being a community is for all of us. I want to thank you for the sports complex. It's wonderful that you all had a vision and we had some property. And how nice it is as I go for my afternoon walks to work out, to walk back there, and just to see that place being transformed and morphing into something that's going to be wonderful for our citizens. I believe it's going to be a terrific economic plus for our community as folks come in and we play those games back there. And so just thank you for that vision. Um, Thank you for the resolutions as we work together for softball. We're restarting softball at Gadsden State, restarting baseball at Gadsden State. And in order to do that, we, we needed your help to allow us to utilize some fields. And so thank you for coming to, to aid us and support us. So we're here. Gadsden State's here. We're here to serve. We're here to assist. I'm a really firm believer in for such a time as this. You know, it was, um, I, I'm not going church on you, but we may hold hands and do kumbaya before we leave. But, you know, it was Mordecai who said to Queen Esther, it's time for you to stand up, for you to step up, for you to speak up, and for you to speak out on behalf of your people. That's right. In that case, the Jewish people. And Mordecai said, who knows that you're in that royal seat to serve your people at such a time as this. 
And we may chuckle at the thought of being in a royal seat, but I believe that you all are sitting in a royal seat. You're sitting in a royal seat because you were chosen to sit in that seat. And you're sitting in a royal seat because you were trusted to sit in that seat. And I feel the same thing about my seat. And so I just simply want to say thank you. You raised your hand. You were chosen to sit in that seat to serve our people. And I couldn't be more proud for you and for our community as we do this work together. Thank you for the privilege to speak to you. Thank you, Dr. Murphy, for those kind words and for our, our gift packages. And we can talk about the the shot glass later, I guess, but that'll, uh, but that was very kind of you. And I, personal moment, uh, I served on the Workforce Development Academy Committee with Dr. Murphy and uh, Dean Ken Kirkland, along with David Hooks. And it was uh, the vision of Derek Williams for us to submit an application for the city of Gadsden to be represented in that inaugural class. And the purpose of this Workforce Academy is workforce development for communities and cities in the state of Alabama. We were fortunate to be in the, in the first group, I think 30 or 31 cities. Uh, and I'm proud that uh, Councilman Williams had the foresight to include Gadsden State Community College. We were the only city that did that. Now this course we took for a, a year uh, was taught in conjunction with the Alabama Community College system. And it, it didn't get past Mr. Jimmy Baker, who is the chancellor of that system, that Gadsden chose to partner with our local community college. I think we all see the value of uh, the city of Gadsden and Gadsden State Community College. Your comment about the we can't be in a silo could not be more timely and could not be more correct. And I know with this mayor and this council, you'll we will see that come to uh, preeminence, continue to work with you as you and your people become help become the economic driver for the city of Gadsden and for all of Etowah County. It's just a, it's a natural marriage and it's something that uh, we will uh, take advantage of and I appreciate your leadership and look, look forward to uh, continued uh, positive relationships that, that serves to lift our entire community. Mr. President. Yes. Could I say something real you quick? You sure can, Mayor Ford. Yeah. Dr. Murphy, it's impressive when you started talking Mordecai and Pastor Smith up here is quoting every scripture before you finish it. <laughs> That's right. So I just want to say he's going to do good. my funeral. <laughs> so, uh, But I, that was impressive. But I want to say also I had, a, uh, I had the opportunity with Dr. Murphy's instruction to be on the hiring committee for the athletic director, who is now Coach Blake Lewis, who is also going to coach the baseball team. So we went to lunch the other day. I just want to lay the groundwork. Something that the mayor's office will be coming with is some uh, partnership with the college again to help build a championship field for the girls' softball and boys' baseball because without the city's help, they could not do it. We asked them to bring back the sports. Uh, it is shown for every student that goes on scholarship, they'll bring two that pay with them. Uh, I think this is something exciting about us in Gadsden. We can get behind a baseball team, a, a softball team. Uh, everybody in the community wanted this to come back. I've talked to coach, coaches at Gadsden City. They're ecstatic about it. But we, for us to compete, we have to be able to compete with the Shelton States and the other ones throughout the state to be able to bring in some talent in our city. So. I just want y'all to know we're, we're in the baby steps of that, but we're looking at it. And uh, right now the city has agreed today as to let the baseball team play on Megan Boulevard for the short time until we can go in partnership with them. So just letting y'all know I want everybody to be a part of that with Dr. Murphy. So thank you. Thank you. Any other? All right. Well, next on our list to speak is uh, Mr. Robert Avery. He's representing Southeastern Regional Economic Roundtable and would like to discuss the Affordable Care Act. Thank you, Mr. President. As you know, we had a lengthy discussion in pre-council. I'm just here to reiterate uh, what we're doing. Um, the Southern Regional Economic Roundtable represents seven states, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Florida. And what we do, we go around, and when we make presentations to governing bodies, we want to make sure we have a record of it. And since y'all did not tape the pre-council, <laughs> I wanted to get on the council meeting so we could make this official. Sure. Uh, what we do is we make a report back to the federal government once we make a presentation to a governing body. And we want to make sure that we have records that it was made, 
that you are aware of what we are talking about, and hopefully um, that will help us when we start asking the federal government for some additional funds for our, the municipalities or the governing bodies, then we will have a record that at least you guys were there and you participated in it. Again, the Southern Region Economic Roundtable is a platform. Um, there's about uh, 60 to 70 people who's involved in this. And again, what we do, we go around to try to educate our communities, making sure that these federal dollars are spent properly. And, and I think in the pre-discussion, uh, we didn't talk about the fact that these dollars are better spent and the government looks highly and favorable on monies that are spent in census tracts where the money needs to be spent. And that's another avenue that you can satisfy the regulations when you start spending these funds. You look at those census tracts, and if those census tracts match up to those needs, then of course you, you've got another clear sailing. But again, I just want to take this opportunity to let my cohorts know that I did come, I did present this information to you, and like I say, we will have a record of this that when we submit our report to the federal government as to who's been participating and who's not and where those federal dollars go. So again, thank you for letting me come. Well, thank you, and thank you for the information you shared. It's, I think it's very valuable, and I'm sure we'll be looking in, into that and give you a phone call. Like I said, I'll be back. All righty. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Robert. All right, now we come to section 25, remarks by the mayor and council. Uh, mayor Ford, would you care to go real, first? Real quick, because I know it's hot. I want to keep you all posted on what we've done uh, for the past week. Uh, yesterday, we had our first uh, meeting with all 24 department heads uh, for the first time in a long time. Uh, I would love for the council to come. Uh, the staff meets every Monday morning at 8.30, and then we meet with department heads at 10, and we try to get out of there by 11 and then each staff of the mayor's office has 415 appointment slots for department heads to meet with in case they need to meet privately with them i'm available 24 7 uh, but that was a big deal had a lot of positive response on that uh, a big announcement today to the council uh, and thank you all for your support uh, we our ida david hooks who the city participates 415,000 in the previous budget uh, we negotiated out a contract with the Etowah County Commission. So they used to have their own IDA director, Miss Marilyn Lott. We had ours, Rainbow City has theirs, and we're trying to bring it all under one umbrella and develop unity. And I've told that story before when I went before Governor Riley, we were all split up and he said, when you can all get everybody together and come back, let me know. Today, we made the announcement that we're going into an agreement. It'll start January 1st. The county will put $150,000 into our IDA, and now we'll join our efforts, and there's 15 board appointments, and the county gets two board appointments out of that 15. So now, even though David Hooks was representing the county for free anyway, because uh, he doesn't just do Gaston, now he's representing the county, and we're all putting more resources together. We're also uh, approaching the municipalities about also them participating, putting some skin in the game. Uh, because he also represents the county as it per se. So that, that will help his recruitment efforts. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, we had a, uh, we did multiple TV interviews, uh, Councilman Wilson supporting our uh, medicinal marijuana. It's gone crazy. Uh, we did a video saying we're open for business. And let me tell you, they're open, they're open to come. So this is fantastic. As I read in the paper, I believe only 31 cities passed the ordinances. So kudos to the previous council and this council. Y'all keep in mind, this is not marijuana like you think growing up in high school. Uh, we have a cancer center that is just breaking ground in the near future. They've already bought the property next to Riverview. We have a cancer center at Gaza Regional Hospital. Uh, we're a hub for medical health care within the geographical region, and we have people knocking their doors down wanting to come and try to get in our area. So this is a fantastic opportunity in an economic development uh, project that we have. The, the, the marijuana, whatever you call it, is in pill form, and it's given to patients that are terminally ill to help ease their pain through their time of suffering. So we have probably done five TV interviews. We've had over 40, 50 calls. I've had every lobbyist in Montgomery that I had contacts with all call. So we decided to develop a committee, 
and John Moore, Jason, David Hooks, who else helped me, uh, is on this committee. Larry, uh, Larry Avery, Councilman, Councilman Avery. Avery. Some folks from the zoning. And some folks from the zoning. The zoning commission has jumped through the hoops and changed some zoning ordinances ASAP. Uh, Y'all, we're on top of it. We're number one. Uh, so they're looking at us, and they're coming to us today. I mean, we're meeting with Fox 6 after this to do an interview about it again. So it's exciting. It's exciting. Uh, the other thing is please continue to encourage Channel 99 to your constituents. We're changing that whole station. It's phenomenal. Uh, we're, we're interviewing employees. We want y'all to interview people. We just we have set up a studio uh, down uh, on the Chambers Council on the fourth floor in the closet behind there. So it's, phenom it's great what's going on. I've had more compliments about that. We've interviewed like four or five employees, and people love it. They want to get to know us. And J Councilman Wilson, you can do an interview on somebody in your district. Yep. I mean, it's just however you want to do it. It's open for business. Uh, I want to say one thing about our employees, and I know y'all echo the same sentiment uh, that I do. You know, we you always hear where well, our employees may not do this, may not do do that, or what have you. Y'all, let me tell you, we got some fantastic employees. Uh, on Thanksgiving Day, while we probably were enjoying our day with our family and traveling or doing what have you, we had <coughs> Deb Hawkins going over at 5 o'clock, opening up the venue for the community Thanksgiving. Employees over there working, and I hate to mention names, but Jen Wethington and her employees getting ready for the train ride, opening night that night, leaving their families Thanksgiving. We had police uh, working shifts, fire working shifts. Uh, it's, it's amazing what these CD employees do, and I'm ashamed to say I never noticed it until I got in this position. But, man, it's an honor to work for you, and uh, I just want to say thank you to the employees and thank you for what you do. So that's it, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. that, Mayor Ford. <coughs> Councilwoman Latham, would you like to? I would just for a second here. I want to kind of echo the words of Dr. Murphy when she said, us, we, and our. I want to give a shout-out to Commissioner Washington and the other uh, commissioners for the tree lighting, unity, the unity tree lighting ceremony on last night. It was awesome, it was great, and I think it's just the sentiment of not only the city, but uh, the county that we're unified and that uh, everyone is eager to work together in advancing not only our county, but advancing our city, so shout out to them. Thank you. Thank you very much for mentioning that. Councilman Smith. Yes. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the mayor, uh, to the council, and to the entire staff here at City Hall. We appreciate every single thing you do. I don't think we can say that enough. I want to first uh, thank everybody who came today. The community involvement is very important. Thank you, Dr. Murphy, for reminding us of these big shoes um, that's under this desk up here. Councilman Williams, who's a friend of mine, uh, I consider him a mentor, has done a great job, and I had to go all the way to Kansas City to find out that he's not only beloved in Gadsden, but also locally, statewide, and even on the national level. And so I want him to know how much we appreciate the great work he's done along with others. Uh, the second thing, I want to make sure that we acknowledge Pastor Joe Simmons. I've known him over 30 years, but I had to come to City Hall, the beautiful young lady who gave the history on how this feeding took place. She mentioned him as helping to launch that. And so he's sitting in the back back there. I want to say to Pastor Simmons, we appreciate your efforts and how this thing grew from there to United Way to the city now, how it's grown to, I don't know how many we fed this year, but the largest in the state. We appreciate you, and I know you're working on another project there. Hope that you'll be standing before this council soon to tell us about that over there near the church. The last thing, um, my father is in his final hours, and so some people may not know. I want to thank Mr. Avery for being here today who's also a friend, and um, we know Mr. Avery hitchhiked as a child to, to hear Dr. King's iconic speech on Washington. You know, we hear a lot of time, Mr. Avery and two friends. 
Well, my father was one of those friends. And I just appreciate the fact that uh, Mr. Thomas has gone home, home to be with the Lord. That's Pastor Roderick Thomas, his father. And my father is in his final hours. I'm glad we still have Mr. Avery still here to kind of put some faces with those names of those other two friends to tell us what it was like as a teenager to hitchhike from Gaston to Washington, D.C. As a teenager to hear this iconic speech in person. I appreciate him if he's still here. Uh, he may have left, but I want to know I'll be leaning on him in the next few days, which will be kind of difficult for us and our family. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Councilman Avery. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, to piggyback right off of uh, uh, Councilman Steve uh, Smith, um, uh, final comments there. Uh, this is why it's important that um, um, we preserve um, those uh, community, community legacies and those persons and pay homage to those persons that's paved the way. So a lot of people ask me why do I not smile often is because I'm serious about what I do. I'm serious about my community. And I love, um, uh, I love uh, uh, the people in which I've come from and the shoulders that I stand on. Now that doesn't mean that I should frown all the time or whatnot, it's just that um, I want to be taken serious and that I mean business. Um, and, and we can have a good time when we get those whiskey glasses from Gaston State. Um, everybody <laughs> on my left will take one and then that big guy on the end down there, he'll definitely take one, okay? <laughs> All right, um, so um, CCRC 11th annual Christmas parade will be December the 10th at 5.30, whereas it's advertised and marketed that will start at cash savers uh, just due to the uh, uh, lack of patrol officers that we, will, uh, we don't want to uh, uh, take up all of the four force um, officers. We're going to shorten that to uh, Joseph T. Robertson, uh, start at Joseph, Joseph T. Robertson, and then make our way down to Carver Square, OK? want to thank the police force for their continuous years in, in providing us that perfection, uh, protection and, and um, uh, starting off our uh, th that Christmas parade there. Also, uh, the second annual Cookies with Santa will be December the 3rd at the American Legion Post uh, 322 at North 10th Street from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, also, there'll be three families that will be um, surprised on Christmas Eve uh, with gifts. And so if there's anyone out there that are listening that have gifts, bikes, clothes, uh, new or newly used that would like to uh, donate uh, to the Carver Community Revitalization Committee, you can get in touch with myself. The new president will be um, uh, announced soon and uh, with information concerning uh, how to uh, reach them and uh, get items to them also. Uh, I've created uh, and made myself uh, more than available. <laughs> um, I, um, I was, I won't go there, but uh, uh, starting uh, Monday, November the 28th, uh, I've uh, created some hours that I will uh, make myself available here at City Hall in the office. So um, uh, so the next dates will be uh, Monday the 5th uh, and Monday the 6th. On Monday the 5th, I'll be here from 1 p.m. to 5. And on uh, Tuesday the 6th, I'll be here from 9.30 to 3 p.m. Then the following week, which is the 12th and the 13th, uh, those same hours will apply for those two days, okay? You can go to... Uh, um, our Facebook page, which is Councilor Larry J. Avery Jr., um, and you can see all of these updates, a lot of the information that the uh, mayor and administration puts out that is great information, uh, different department heads when it concerns parks and recreation, public works. Uh, I, we repost those so that the community can be informed. The biggest thing is to be informed. We also repost Channel 99 stuff, uh, 30, um, uh, and any other news outlets that uh, whether we are interviewing or whether they are covering anything in Gaston, good or bad. We want to, uh, again, make sure that our community, and mostly, of course, with, young, uh, with Facebook, it's young people, uh, making, that, making sure that young people know to be invited to uh, pre-council and council meeting and all of these uh, other activities that they are informed about parks and recs because it's always stated that there's not anything going on in the city. So that's the reason why I ask certain questions about parks and recs and different other things and, 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 and share those activities, okay? Um, 
Big shout out to all the small businesses uh, in District 3 and all over the city of Gaston, but District 3, we thank you so much. I've been making my rounds to each and every business. My goal is to reach, contact, touch, and speak to every business in District 3 to let them know that we appreciate them, uh, their hard work, and staying in our community and, and, st and, and, and making it as we um, work with other outlets to uh, make sure that they have resources and, and continue on the legacy uh, in the city. Um, uh, want to uh, that it has been stated about the warming stations and I, I just uh, I live in a community where I see these ladies and gentlemen on a daily basis okay where they are out here actually staying sleeping on the concrete pads or under bridges or you know um, there was one time where I, I, I purchased uh, the uh, dead end behind my home where I live and we was providing tents for them to sleep at this is real Okay, even in a city as 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 as, as the size of Gaston, and so um, I I have committed my life. Um, my family have also joined in with me, and other uh, uh, organizations to make sure that we feed these young person, uh, these young and older uh, uh, people. Um, we want to thank Carla Bugs and Pastor Word with Freedom Church uh, and Salvation Army and all of these organizations that put in over uh, 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 efforts um, and time in, 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 in looking after others that uh, have less than we do. Um, finally, uh, as we have passed Thanksgiving, giving uh, homage to uh, and thanks to the group that was at Carver, I think that's former council uh, uh, Thomas Worthy uh, organization, as well as I think her name is T Tanya Baker, um, and that group that fed uh, a number of people um, that came out uh, to Carver to receive plates and dinner, and also the uh, organization uh, that fed at the venue for their hard work and all of the, uh, the the bellies that were full on Thanksgiving Day due to uh, the volunteerism and, and efforts that were put in uh, on that day. Um, uh, these works will never go unnoticed, and, and, and we hope that uh, we can one day uh, uh, grow this to where that again it's not the same people uh, but we are utilizing uh, our entire community to impact a, a greater uh, need. Thank you. Councilman Wilson. Microphone. Uh, real quick, I swear, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to get this mayor to start saying medical cannabis instead of <laughs> marijuana. Um, so please, I'm asking for his staff to rally with me on that. Um, I also want to say good afternoon to everybody except for the Iranian men's national soccer team. We have an elimination game against Iran in 40 minutes, so that's why I'm going to be brief. I think the trophy for longest closing uh, remarks is about to be taken away from me. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, and also welcome to Coach Freeze, the new head football coach at Auburn University. And also, even more importantly, welcome to the new assistant head football coach at Auburn University, Carnell Cadillac. Williams. Thank you, Amen. Mr. President. Thank you. Councilwoman Minotra. I just want to say I'm thankful for um, the training and the information that we received when this group uh, attended uh, the National League of Municipalities in Kansas City. And we learned a lot, we got energized, and you'll hear a lot more from us about that visit. Councilman, there Robinson. used to be a crowd out there. <laughs> <laughs> They're all gone. Uh, everybody, just uh, stay safe tonight during the storms. Get your plan together. Uh, if, if we were to have crazy severe weather, uh, thank you, Dr. Murphy, for the gift bag. Uh, shot glass would have been nice, but you know, a coffee thermos, whiskey will go in a coffee, a coffee thermos, no problem. Uh, maybe the next sport. I'm so happy we do have baseball and softball back, but maybe we can try to get a soccer team up here at Gazan State. I think that would be beautiful. And speaking of soccer. Let's go USA. Let's go do it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, final comments. Uh, we heard from Jen Weathington. We have uh, all kind of fun stuff. We've got a Christmas parade coming up. We've got a, a boat parade out here. We've got tree lighting, and all that's on Friday night, right? Jen starts at 4.30. Is that when? Christmas. Christ yeah, okay, Christmas tree lighting, 4.30 Friday, and then the boat parade immediately after, and then parade is Saturday morning. Is that correct? All right. Uh, also, one of speaking of Saturday, Salvation Army is having their annual Christmas roadblock at the Gazda Mall uh, to start at nine o'clock uh, through four o'clock. 
uh, I hesitate to say, but I'll be standing out there uh, <laughs> dodging trucks. I, I don't want to have to dodge you, so please go slow when you come by through there. I'm not as quick as I used to be, and I'm a lot larger than I used to be, so that's a bad combination. Uh, congratulations to Mayor Ford on the IDA uh, coming together uh, countywide. That is something that has been sorely needed, and I appreciate your leadership and your team's leadership in that area, and of course David Hooks's leadership as as well. And speaking on uh, Mayor Ford, uh, he has brought a really uh, top-notch team with him to City Hall. A lot of us have been meeting with uh, that group, uh, his group, from time to time. Very impressed. Uh, love the energy. Love the direction and just look forward to great things to come from you and, 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 and from that team. Dr. Murphy, I can't say thank you enough for your friendship and your leadership at Gadsden State. Uh, you've, you've come to our city from, uh, as, as Jimmy Baker said, he, he stole you from Hoover City School System. So uh, we're glad that he did. And we're glad that you're here with, with your team and, and we really appreciate the energy and vision you're bringing. It's a great combination with what's going on in our city and what's going on at our co uh, community college. So uh, a big thank you to that. And uh, couldn't agree more with Mayor Ford. Uh, one of the things I get asked as a new councilman prior term was what do you think about City Hall? What, what stands out? And it's the employees. It's the human capital we have at, that work in, in the city of Gadsden. You couldn't have said it better, Mayor Ford. We, we have some really good people, some very intelligent, faithful, hardworking people that work for us seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And I, I agree with you. I couldn't be more proud to, to be a, a, a small part of that. And uh, last but not least, Councilman Smith, we will be in prayer for you and your family. So sorry and so sad to hear uh, the current condition, uh, but you are in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. That being said, if nothing further, we stand adjourned. <laughs>